<laughs> hey Survivor fans, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out my Survivor Puzzle app. The link is in the video's description. I mean, being on the jury means that that I uh, that I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> that I played myself out. I did not win Survivor, um, which is a massive disappointment because I really thought that uh, that I could that I could pull it off. I, I've uh, I always believed that I could, um, and uh, and it's also really cool at the same time because as a massive Survivor fan, as a super duper fan, uh, I get to have the best seat in the house for Tribal Council. I have a front row seat to watching um, one of maybe the coolest seasons Survivor has ever done and seeing some of my favorite players from many, many years battle it out um, for the biggest prize in Survivor history. And I am taking my role very seriously. You know, I, um, I think that I, you know, I know how much it meant to me when I got the 10 votes from my jury on Millennials vs. Gen X, um, and I get to do that for somebody else. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Tony came into this game with one of the biggest targets out of anybody. I mean, I would have put him up there with Sandra and Boston Rob and Kim um, and maybe a couple other people as having the highest threat level in the game. Um, which would make it, I think, especially hard to get to the end. So the fact that he has made it to the final four um, without ever being voted for is, is, is pretty outrageous. He was able to adapt his game early on so that people didn't fear him as much. He laid low, he, he took his time just connecting with people um, uh, you know, on a personal basis and just being like kind-hearted um, and a good person and a good worker around camp and not really um, you know, running off and looking for idols and, and gaming t so hard. And then in the, in the stretch, he turned it on. Tony has played a very dominant game. He uh, found an idol. He won four individual immunities, which is not something that I think anyone would have ever expected from Tony. And in addition to all of those things, he directed the vast majority of, the, it, he seemed to have directed the vast majority of the post-merge votes. So I, I definitely plan on keeping an open mind, but it, it seems to me, based on everything that everybody has said and my own impressions in the game, that Tony really was in control for, um, for, for far more of this game than any other single person that played this season. Tony dominated the, the game as the, the normal game of Survivor as we know it, and in many ways, Natalie dominated the Edge of Extinction. Two very different games that I, I almost feel it's ridiculous to even try to compare. Like, how can you judge what Natalie did next to what Tony did when they weren't even playing the same game? They were operating in, like, different universes, parallel universes maybe, but like completely different spheres. Um, and so that makes it very difficult to, to look at side by side and, and make a judgment. I am a bit more of a survivor purist. I'm gonna give a little bit more credence to someone who was never voted out of the game. I think if you got voted out of the, the game, it can only be seen as a negative on your, um, uh, you know, some of the reasons why you should win this game. Um, I mean, on any other season, Natalie goes home first, and, and, and that's the end of it. Um, now, given the fact that we knew that the edge was in play, um, th there there is merit to, you know, you still can win after getting voted out and coming back in, but I definitely think it takes you down a notch. Um, but she did she did a lot of things very masterfully at the edge 
um, amassed an incredible amount of tokens in order to give herself the best chance uh, to come back in the game, and if she did come back in the game, to, to potentially make it to the end. So from the perspective of having been voted out first, she did what she needed to do in order to make it to the end. Um, but if she loses this game against Tony, I think it will be in a very close vote. If I were to vo vote for Michelle at the end, it would be for a few reasons. One is that she really epitomizes the way that this season has been played in a lot of ways, which is get through the vote. Um, so much of the post-merge of this season, and actually even the, the throughout the entirety of Winners at War, it's been how do I make sure that I don't go home? Um, and how do I slither through this game where nobody wants to throw out a name, um, but yet somebody has to go home. And I think Michelle did a good job of laying back enough, um, but also pushing enough to make sure that she was right in the middle of that so that she could be aware if her name did come up, but she wasn't pushing so hard that then she became a target. Um, and she played that part of the game quite well. She survived despite not really having strong alliances that were keeping her safe. Or if she did have those, they went, they went to the edge relatively early. Um, she kept losing people and losing people and losing people, and yet she found a way to survive, whether it was through winning individual immunities at crucial times, um, or by zigging when she needed to zig and zagging when she needed to zag. I plan on voting for the person that I want to represent all of us and season 40 and winners at war and win $2 million and another title of Soul Survivor. A great survivor player knows that it doesn't matter how physically strong you are, how even smart you are, how capable you are of surviving in the elements. What matters is your ability to connect with the people around you, make them trust you, and make them like you so that they want you to win a million dollars in the title of Soul Survivor. Because you can know all of the numbers in the world and think of all the strategies and win all of the challenges, but if people don't want you to win, then you won't. Ask Russell Hance.